Hello everybody and welcome to the latest update video for Survive. Survive is a zombie survival shooter set in a procedural open world. In this update, I'm going to go over the changes since the last video. And there's been quite a lot. So the first thing you probably noticed is the new zombie rendering system. This system mixes and matches different head models, body models, head textures, body textures, uh, blood overlay textures, and tint variations to create literally thousands of different zombies. If you look at Carl here, you can see that his skin, his pants, and his shoes are all tinted a different color. I know you can't see the full potential of this system right now because there's only one model set and texture set, but this will really allow for a ton of different zombies, and it renders zombies about 10 times more efficient than they were rendered before. I just started working with a new contractor to create all the zombie models for the game. They should be in the game fairly soon. The next thing you've probably noticed already is the zombie sounds. When a zombie notices you, it makes a screaming sound, and then when it's running after you like this, you can hear him sprinting. They also have footstep sounds, so if I press R, so they don't notice me anymore. You can go on close, you can hear the sounds. And they make idle sounds when they're not attacking you. These footsteps are also affected by what material the zombie's on, just like the player. So if I let the zombie chase me, you can hear, listen to his footsteps, you can see they're different when he's on the road and when he's on the grass. In this update, I also added weapon spread so that when the gun is not aimed down the sights, it's a lot less accurate. In the next update, I'm going to add kick to the gun so that you can't just go full auto and have perfect accuracy the whole time. You'll have to compensate for the recoil. The next thing I added was texture hot loading, it really helped with the creation of the zombie rendering system. So pause the game, go into Photoshop, add some random stuff onto these textures, save them, and then reload them. You can see how they changed in real time without having to completely restart the game. Should I go back and change them back? Save, save. The system really helps not because normally you'd have to restart the game every time you wanted to edit a texture. And that could take a really long time just to make small changes. The next thing I added was cube mapping. It's a fairly simple technique, and I probably should have added it sooner, but 
think it adds a lot to the game. As you can see on the gun, it's a little more reflective in blue because the sky is blue. If I turn off the lighting, you can see that it's not from the lighting, it's just from the cube map. So if I come up here and look at these uh, little test spheres that I added, you can see how the roughness map that I added uh, changes how reflective an object is. So on the far left we have really rough and matte surfaces and on the right it's more reflective. So the rougher something is the blurrier its environment maps are and the shinier the object is the less blurry they are so it looks more reflective. This also affects the specular exponent which changes the shape of the specular reflection. So you can see there's smaller ones on the shiny objects and bigger and less powerful ones on the more matte objects. To generate these cube maps, I just implemented a one-pass system that uses geometry shaders so that um, these cube maps can be rendered super fast, which is useful in the future when cube maps will be used to render uh, point light shadow maps. And they'll also be used to render uh, environment light probes that will be placed throughout the world so that everything picks up uh, direct ambient lighting and uh, reflections. So if I go into the shader here and change the roughness to 1 for everything, and then change the color of the specular highlights and the diffuse color of the road and the gun to both gold, I can get a cold gun and a bunch of chrome zombies. Right now the reflections look a little bit off because the trees aren't rendered into the cube maps just yet, and the reason they're not is because the way they're performing is because cube maps are still generated in real time. Uh, once the cube maps are generated during world generation, before you start playing, uh, then I can render the trees into them without having to worry about performance. But for now, they're just uh, the terrain and the skies and the cube maps. Right now, there's only one environment map being generated for the entire world, and everything is using the same one. And it's being rendered at the player's position every few seconds. And it, so that causes a few problems, but I think right now it's good enough. Alright, so now I'm just going to go back to the normal shaders and then kill some zombies until it's night time so I can show the last feature I added. Let me just speed up the time of day a little bit. As you can see, there's still no sprint animation. That's what I'm going to do in the next update because it looks really weird sprinting with a it's not very really good walk animation. Oh, oh and that's all. Another thing I added is the mountains now cast shadows. So now we're in shadow from those mountains because the sun went behind it. Oh, I also added very simple particle lighting. They don't receive shadows yet, but they do take on the color of the light. As you can see, as it gets darker, the particle color changes, and it gets darker. And because of all the texture hot loading, or just the texture hot loading, I uh, tweaked a bunch of stuff, including the how dark it is at night. So when it gets a little bit darker, just say it's not really that playable, it's just too dark. So I added a... Well, I didn't add... There's always been a flashlight, but now I added a working flashlight. I think that looks pretty cool. I added a sound effect for it. This flashlight is perfectly attached to the gun, so when there's reload animations and other stuff, it'll move with it. So see if I turn the gun really fast, you can see it's perfectly on there. Go up really close, you can see it's coming right out of the flashlight. If I walk, you can see it move like that. If I just stand still, you can see the idle. I think it makes it a lot scarier when at night, because you know, it's darker and you just have a flashlight.
And later on, the zombies will actually notice that they're being lit up by a flashlight. So I always get frustrated in games when you have a flashlight out and the zombies or whatever enemy don't even care that there's a flashlight in their face. They still don't notice you. But I'll add that later. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that these numbers on the, the zombie stomachs are just a test of the blood splatter overlay system so that each um, each zombie can have its own, can, use, can choose between four different blood splatter variations to make the zombies look more different. It's also very cheap to do. So here I just made a texture that's either one through four just to show that uh, each one gets a different number randomly. I also forgot to mention that this spotlight uses a uh, flashlight texture to modulate how much light it gives out. This way the flashlight looks a lot more realistic, but I'm sure you've noticed that already. So in the next update, I'm going to work on the sprint animation first because that's getting on my nerves. But uh, sprint animation, probably a new walk animation, and then I'm going to start doing the attack and uh, new idle walk animations for the zombies. So mostly animations, and I'm probably going to start working on a, an auto rigging uh, system so these zombies can get automatically rigged to the skeleton. So that when I get the new zombies, I don't have to pay uh, someone to rig them. So it'll end up just costing a lot more money in the long run, instead of just creating an automatic rigger. Well, that's it for this update, and thanks for watching. If you pre-order Survive, you can try this build of the game right now. You will get a download link and a free Steam key immediately. To pre-order Survive and follow the development blog, go to subsurfacegames.com slash survive. For more frequent development news, like the Facebook page at facebook.com slash subsurfacegames, and follow me on Twitter at subsurfacegames.